However, I thought about it. Violet and my parents have always been bad to me. I truly needed to let them get a taste of their own medicine. Just as I tried to leave the house, I found the cops at the door. They were looking for Violet. Without thinking, I took them to my aunt's place where my parents and Violet were found. Immediately, she was arrested. My family rained curses on me and called a jealous, good-for-nothing child. I regret not asking your mother to abort you. I was hurt by their words, but I didn't mind. Violet was arrested, and that's all that mattered. The stabbed girl fortunately didn't die, but her parents weren't going to let things slide. They pressed charges against my sister for attempted murder. My family members raged. Everyone blamed me. In anger, my parents kicked me out and vowed to kill me if they ever saw me again. Hi there. I'm Samantha Gary, aged 24 and preparing for my marriage to Henry, a man I've been with for over six years. We met during the time I was struggling, after getting kicked out by my family. You're wondering the reason I was kicked out, aren't you? Even more, at such a young age of 18, well, I was born two years after my elder sister, Violet. You could say we were very different from each other. While Violet took our mom's ethereal beauty, I took my father's average looks. That kind of gave my sister an upper hand, as everyone preferred her to me. Our mom saw her as her mini self, so she mostly tried to make them look the same. Whenever we were attending a party, she would dress Violet in the same dress as her. They would wear the same pair of shoes and even bags, while I just wore regular clothes. Our extended families were even worse. My mother's family absolutely adored Violet. According to my grandparents, she reminded them of when my mother was a little child. Of course, they treated her differently from how I was treated. You would think, because I looked like my dad, he and his family members would treat me specially, the same way my mom and her family did to Violet. But that didn't happen. My dad was equally as obsessed with Violet as my mother. Whenever he shopped for us, he would often get her more colorful and feminine dresses while he bought me whatever. His family was no different. Just because I looked like my father didn't make me any less girly, but it seemed as though they were ignoring that. While they taught Violet how to knit and all, they'd ask me to go play with my male cousins. Because of how frequently they got me blue and black things, I began to hate those colors. I was tired of seeing them. I loved pink too, just like Violet. I loved to have my hair packed in a ponytail with pink or other colorful hair ties. I didn't like how my mom always made them cut my hair to chin length while Violet's grew past her shoulders. We soon began our college education. Since Violet was only two years older and didn't start going to school early, she was higher than me by just a class. When we got into high school, Violet became an entirely different person. At school, she was wild. She was growing to be even more beautiful, and it was getting into her head. She was considered the most pretty girl in the school. Everyone wanted to be friends with her, disregarding the fact that she already chose her own squad. Surprisingly, the school authorities also seemed to favor my sister over others. Her uniform fitted her the most. Every time I looked at her in the mini skirt and shirt that looked like it had been specially sewn for her, I wondered if they'd intentionally given me the ugly uniform I had. My skirt went past my knees and my shirt was so big and ugly. My family had mocked me the day we were both given our uniforms. However, despite how ugly I they'd said I looked, I found students wanting to be friends with me. They'd often come to me and ask to be friends, but I always refused and told them I needed no friends. However, truthfully, I did. I craved to have friends like my sister did. But I felt they all came to me because they knew we were sisters. Perhaps they were just looking for an easier way to get closer to her. I didn't want to be used as a path and be abandoned later on when they'd gotten to their final destination, so I refused. One thing I knew I was better than my sister at was academics. I was way smarter than her. She was the perfect definition of beauty without brains, as she was always struggling to be in the top 10, while I barely came second. I was always topping the class, but my parents didn't seem to care about that. Whether my sister was intelligent enough, all they cared about was making her look beautiful and get people's attention. In our second year in high school, the school decided to have a party. I was 15 then, and Violet was 17. Luckily, I was among those allowed to attend, since it was a party for those over 14 years of age. Violet refused my parents' shopping for what she would wear and asked that she be given the money instead. 
Without arguing, they gave her enough money to shop. Seeing that, I also told them I wanted to shop for myself, but they refused. Don't compare yourself to your sister who's more mature and fashion inclined than you. If you're insisting to shop for yourself, then we're going to give you only half of what we gave your sister. I wasn't pleased, but I also didn't want to wear any blue ugly dress they planned to buy for me. So I agreed to receive only half. I believed I'd find a way to make it worth it. it. They gave it to me and I went to a boutique I'd been wishing to shop at. When I got in, I met a beautiful lady at the front desk and greeted her politely. She asked what I need and I was quiet for a moment. I needed to buy beautiful clothes to look pretty too, but I didn't know how to explain it to her. So I decided to tell her everything my parents have been doing to my sister and I. I was only given this amount, but I hope it's enough to get me clothes that would make me look pretty. Oh, lovely. I was once a victim of favoritism too. I'm glad to be in this position. Come with me. They're all going to be mesmerized when they see you. She took me to a beautiful section of the boutique and had me try on different beautiful and glittering dresses. Eventually, I settled for a pink ball grown that had sparkling stones attached to it. I looked just like a princess in it. She also got me matching silver shoes and a small pink bag. I was elated, but also scared. They're beautiful, but I don't think my money would be enough to pay for it. Oh no, darling. That money is going to be used to buy the ugly dress your parents expect you to buy. She gave me an ugly looking black and blue dress and packaged it in a bag. She gave me the other dress, shoes and bag without collecting a dime and advised me to hide it from my parents. And I did. I returned home when neither of them was around and hid the dress in a place where I knew they'd never check. When they returned home and we showed them the clothes we got, they mocked mine. Violet's clothes were pretty, but I was happy that they weren't as elegant as mine. On the day of the party, I wore the ugly one and took the pretty one to the lady's boutique. She allowed me to change there and even helped me with a soft touch of makeup. At the party, everyone's attention was on me. I could see Violet's anger when everyone ignored her and praised me for being so beautiful. After the party, we headed home and my parents were shocked. In anger, my mom took the clothes and shred it to pieces, yelling and cussing at me for trying to compete with her daughter. I felt bad, but I let it slide and simply went to my room to sleep it away. The next day at school, more people asked to be friends with me, but I refused all. I didn't want that much attention. Years flew by and I clocked 18. We were done with high school. Violet was in college already while I was preparing for my entrance exams. One day, Violet returned home looking disoriented and scared. Her whole body was trembling and she had blood stains on her hands and clothes. My parents, concerned and scared, asked to know what happened after managing to keep her calm. It was then that she revealed the shocking news. While having a fight with a girl because she insinuated Violet wasn't beautiful, she'd accidentally stabbed her in the stomach with a pen. She absconded, leaving the girl bleeding and didn't know if the girl was dead. My parents were shocked and thrown into a state of panic. They paced about, wondering what to do. You have to hide. I'll take you to Jessica's house and explain this to her. Until we figure this out, you mustn't leave there. I was shocked. How could a treat a serious case like that so delicately and not even tell Violet that she was wrong? Are you not going to tell her she's wrong? They eyed me maliciously and dared me to say a word about it to anyone. Together, they left the house with Violet and straight to my father's sister, Jessica, who seemed to cherish Violet even more than my parents. I headed to the boutique lady. Over the years, we'd become close and I confided in her a lot. I told her about what happened Go to the police and tell them. This is your only chance to get revenge and teach those parents of yours a lesson. I did oppose and returned home. However, I thought about it. Violet and my parents have always been bad to me. I truly needed to let them get a taste of their own medicine. Just as I tried to leave the house, I found the cops at the door. They were looking for Violet. Without thinking, I took them to my aunt's place where my parents and Violet were found. Immediately, she was arrested. My family rained curses on me and called a jealous, good-for-nothing child. I regret not asking your mother to abort you. I was hurt by their words, but I didn't mind. Violet was arrested, and that's all that mattered. The stabbed girl fortunately didn't die, but her parents weren't going to let things slide. They pressed charges against my sister for attempted murder. My family members raged. Everyone blamed me. 
In anger, my parents kicked me out and vowed to kill me if they ever saw me again. I went to the boutique lady and she gladly took me in. I got to hear that my parents and aunt were also arrested for trying to hide a criminal. Uh, while my parents and aunt were given one year jail term each, Violet got 18 years. It had taken a lot of money and treatments to save the girl. It was even discovered that Violet had broken her back after stepping on her back several times, which led the girl to being confined to a wheelchair, possibly for the rest of her life. I worked with the boutique lady and she helped me through my college education. She was like a mother to me and helped me gain back my self-esteem which my family had killed. We relocated to Italy after she got a job there and I transferred to one of the best colleges there. It was in my third year that I met Henry, my soon-to-be husband. Last I heard from my parents, they weren't doing so well after losing their daughters. They did try to reach me once, but I pretended to not know them and even threatened to report them to the police if they ever tried to speak to me again. Heard my mom is miserable after my dad had stroke, and she is the one taking care of him with no support from anyone they are both so lonely serves them right. Of course, the boutique lady, who I now address as mom, is going to stand in as my mother on my wedding day. I also plan to give my first child her name, but she doesn't know that yet. It's going to be a surprise and I can't wait to see her reaction. Thanks for watching. Please subscribing is zero dollars.